John Frederick Pito is one of the greatest still life painters in the world. Pito was a mystery. He was haunted by some things that we still don't know. I believe that he tried to tell his story through his paintings. The Pitos uh, were very strong Methodists. The Methodists had a camp meeting association where Island Heights is now. Not all of it, but most of Island Heights. They came down to Island Heights for the camp meeting. John Pito, my great-grandfather, he played the coronet in the band that they had. In 1889, he built his house with his father's help, I, I believe. They don't ever mention who paid for it. Pito came down to Island Heights um, and stayed with his aunts, who had one of the cottages up on the camp meeting grounds. He would come and play the cornet for the um, Methodist camp meeting grounds. Um, and over time, after he built this house, he ended up moving one of the cottages from the camp meeting grounds to the property here at, at the Pito Museum. was only 11 years old. There still were not that many year-round houses. There were some people who used homes here as summer retreats. It is possible that Pito did move down here because it was a Methodist community. I can't speak to his own religious background, but I think I can say definitively that there's no Christian imagery in his paintings. He came down to a place that was pretty much marsh with some beautiful stately homes on the riverfront that were unoccupied most of the year, a hotel waiting for business. Okay, Tom's River, which I'm sorry, was never a hub of intellectual civilization. Sorry, Tom's River. But he came, he came to a place where he wasn't going to make a success, even as a Methodist. The extraordinary thing about John Frederick Pito and his great still lifes are that they were painted in Island Heights. And Pito being one of the most important still life painters of ever of the world, and he's from Island Heights, New Jersey. I mean, who would have thought? Pito's work is all over the world. Princeton Art Museum has pieces, Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And a friend tells me that she was in Spain and she's seen a banner going across the street about this artist from Island Heights, New Jersey. At the Brooklyn Museum, at the College Museum of Art in Williamstown, Massachusetts, they're at the Metropolitan Museum, they're at the High Museum in Atlanta, they're at the Museum of Modern Art. I mean, every major museum in America and abroad as well is trying to get a pedo. I mean, they are so much in demand at this point. And rumor has it that here in Island Heights, there are people that still have pedos, but they keep them out of the public view and they, um, some of them are kept in storage, which is where they should be. The rumor is that there are several people that have them under beds. Uh, I'm not from Island Heights, even though I live here now, but um, it's a very eccentric community and all kinds of things are possible. In fact, that's probably why PETA was so successful because he was not in Philadelphia. He was not under pressure from other people. He could begin to explore his own sensibility. And I think that's an extraordinary thing.